Good morning. How long has it been since you were last together in a church anywhere? Last week. Last week, okay. <laughs> uh, for me, it's been about um, three years. <laughs> so this is a lovely and very different but I'm looking forward to sharing our service with you this morning. I'm the Reverend Wendy Keene, and I am the Summer Supply Minister. As I've been welcomed by this community, so I extend that welcome to all of you. Whether this is your home congregation, or you're visiting, or you have found us online, know the Spirit of Christ is with us whenever and wherever we worship. This Sunday's reader is Gail Stevens. Byron Herman is providing all the music for the service. Christine Eit assembled the PowerPoint. And is Jack Goffrey doing Zoom for us? Yes, okay. So thank you to everyone who has worked hard to pull this particular service together. It's a hybrid of in-person and online. This morning, we will be celebrating the sacrament of baptism. Hunter and Aria Carey, the children of Danielle Lank and Daniel Carey, and the grandchildren of Janet Lank, will be initiated into the Christian family. As you can see, we have all the paraphernalia up front for this wonderful sacrament of initiation. Ah, and now there's actually a Christ candle to light. How exciting. The churches wherever God's people are praising, singing God's goodness for joy of this day. The churches wherever disciples of Jesus remember his story and walk in his way. The churches wherever God's people are helping, caring for neighbors in sickness and need. The churches wherever God's people are sharing the words of the Bible in gift and in deed. How lovely to sing and hear other voices singing with you. O come, let us sing to God. Shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyously shout to God with songs of praise. Let's sing again. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. 
a place for saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all god's children dare to seek to dream god's reign anew here the cross shall stand as a witness and a symbol of god's grace here as one we claim the faith of jesus all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all our name, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed, as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us pray. Holy God, you have called us together to worship just as we are. We cannot pretend to be what we are not, for you have made us and know us through and through. In our weakness, we come with prayers for strength. In our strength, we come with prayers of thanksgiving. Open our hearts that we might pray with honesty and await your answers with renewed faith. May our praise and our worship be unrestrained. Amen. So this morning, we are initiating two lovely little people 
into the community of Christ. Does anyone here remember their baptism? <laughs> well, you know, some people get baptized as adults. In the United Church and a lot of other churches, it is the custom to baptize children whenever they are able to be brought forward to the font. But you know, back in the day, when Christians were persecuted, a lot of people delayed baptism until their deathbed. That's the old deathbed conversion that we sometimes hear about, simply because in certain times and places to be a Christian came with a very heavy price. And so as long as you weren't a confirmed, full-on Christian, uh, you could claim a certain amount of safety from the Roman authorities. It's a wonderful sign of the time and the place and the communities in which we live that we can take babies and toddlers and initiate them into the life of Christ without fear that their ongoing growth as Christians will be cut short by the government. And so when we come together each and every time to celebrate the sacrament of baptism, we get very focused on the joy of initiating and bringing new people into the community, especially marking that important first stage for children. But I think because it's been 2,000 years since Christians were persecuted universally that we forget the tremendous blessing and joy of the peace in which the church in Canada at least exists so that children can be welcomed at any time they or their parents wish to introduce them to the God of love, peace, and joy. And so it is a day of joy that in the middle of this pandemic, it has been possible to come together and to do what we so long to do as church, as parents, as family. Let's join together and sing again or listen. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Our scripture reading today is first taken from Sam, Psalm 15. Who shall abide in God's sanctuary? O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do not evil to their friends, 
nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. And now reading from Mark 7, various verses. Okay. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile? Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come Come, sorry. For, for, formification, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, work, wickedness, deceit, license, licentiousness, every slander, pride, folly. All these things, evil things, come from within, and they defile a person. Doesn't it figure, the very day we are able to worship together in person and we're going to celebrate two baptisms, we get a gospel reading that is, frankly, uncomfortable. One that is about as far from the spirit we are expecting here today as could possibly be. And yet, as a lectionary preacher, that is, as one who follows the cycle of readings for the year, I have stuck us with that reading from Mark for this lovely day. But I'm not going to apologize because, you see, readings like this, and there are many of them in the Bible, are easy to avoid, especially on a Sunday when we're welcoming innocent children into the church. But if we walk away from the hard readings, we are stepping away from the beautiful truth they contain. Sure, it's wrapped up in what sounds like the language of sin and judgment, but perhaps it helps if we take to think a moment to think about Jesus himself and why he felt compelled to say these words. The Bible, as many of us know, is not one book, but a library. And not just any library, but a collection of stories and truths that God wants shared with us. The problem is that in the lectionary, they tend to show up at inconvenient times. Not unlike, say, family arguments at Christmas dinner. But our God is a generous God, slow to anger and swift to compassion. Our God is a creative God, bringing into being this big, beautiful, and evolving world of wonders, filled with life, filled with beauty, filled with possibility and people. And it's the people part that always trips us up, not the God part. It is people who 
Step out of the dance of creation, the dance of new life and new hope. Even in the midst of sorrow and suffering, these things are still going on. It is people who compete with one another, with God, and with all creation, throwing the world into disarray. We will celebrate new life and baptism in just a few moments because we know the joy and the promise in the sacrament live alongside human preoccupation with competition with one another and with God. So perhaps this is the right day for such a hard gospel reading. You see, God calls us to join in a global conspiracy of goodness and blessing, to heal and restore wherever we see destruction and suffering. Really, what is at the heart of Jesus' hard, word, hard words about defilement and the evil within. Jesus came to show us another way to live together, a way to live with each other and with all God's creation in harmony. And one of the things he taught us was not to confuse religious tradition and human tradition with the gifts and the teachings of God. It doesn't matter so much what we eat or drink or when or how we try to live in harmony with one another in all creation. It's what in our heart is in our hearts that matters. It's what comes out of our mouths that defiles us because what comes out of our mouths is what is coming out of our hearts. Jesus is aching to get people to understand that God calls us all into what the writer Brian McLaren calls a conspiracy of goodness and blessing. Jesus and the universe do not shy away from challenges and the horrors of the world at our own hands. Look further than Afghanistan, once again dumb the news this week. But once again, only dominating the news for as long as we want to be in it. The baptisms we are to celebrate are not something we are doing today in spite of what's going on in the world, but because of it. And we're doing it way in this very building and among all of your inner conspiracy of goodness. God's conspiracy of blessed hope. God's conspiracy of love for all who come to others to be healed, to be restored, to be baptized. Today's good news is wrapped up in uncouple words. But unwrap it, and we can see that it is another way of sharing a never-ending campaign of hope that we will follow where it leads us on this road out of evil and loss towards the peace that is the birth of every single creature on this planet. Thanks be to God. So we are entering the time of the service of baptism. I'm going to start with a state purpose. There will be the abysmal hymn as we go through the words and the purpose of the sacrament, I'm doing a lot of it from here to the pew, just to get easier. There's a lot of parts, and, and two of them happen to small children, for whom still in church is not a well-practiced. And then once on to the bulk of the promises, then the children will be brought, and we will splash some water around. In the Gospel of this is what Jesus said about welcoming children people brought their place hands on them. His disciples told people to stop bothering him. When Jesus saw this, he became angry and said, let the children come to me. Don't try to them. It is people, them, who belong to the kingdom of God. I tell you, you cannot get into God's kingdom unless you approach it the way a child does. Then Jesus took the children into his arm and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Now, 
we have the hymn. Child of a sing, child of promise, baptized with the Spirit's Son, with this water God sealed you to love and grace divine. Child of love, our love's expression, love's creation, loved in ye. Fresh from God, refresh our spirit into joy and laughter lead. Child of joy, our dearest treasure, God you are, from God you came. Back to God we humbly give you, live as one who bears Christ's name. Child of God, your loving parent, turn to know who child you are. Grow to laugh and sing and worship, trusting in God's love and care. We enter now into the service of baptism for Hunter Mike Harry and Eva Carey, son and daughter of Danielle Link, Daniel Carey. Dan has brought them all the way from Medicat, Alberta, baptized here in her church with her mother Janet happily watching on. Welcome home. As of the service of baptism, I will be asking Danielle, Godparents, Kristen Sword and Jennifer Loans, and you, the congregation, to commit in supporting and helping Hunter and Eric grow in their relationship with God. You will note that there isn't a lot of detail. <laughs> when it comes time for Eddie to say or do anything, I will let you know either the words or the action that you need. I have found that process also greatly allows, excuse me, generally allows everyone to relax and participate more fully if they're not always looking what they're supposed to say next. So, we're going to profession of faith. Then, please rise where you are as you are able. Now, do you believe in God, of love, in Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power? If so, please answer, I do, grace of God. Do you seek to resist evil, live in love and justice? If so, please answer, I will, God being my brother. Will you follow the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer, I will, God being my brother. Will you join with sisters and brothers in this community to celebrate God's presence, live with respect and to love and others? If so, answer, God being my helper. In baptism, Hunter and Aria mark an important step on their journey of faith. Danielle, will you care for them and take their place within the mission and witness of Christ's church? If so, please answer, I will, God be helper. Sin and Jennifer, please share the baby. Recognizing that many persons nurture and influence the life of the child, Will you support Hunter and Area and their family as they grow in faith? If so, please answer, I will, God be helper. Please be seated. Congregation, as you are able, please rise. Calls us to make disciples of all nations, who offer God's gift of grace and baptism. You who witness and celebrate the sacrament, promise your love, support and care to those about to be baptized as they live in Christ? If so, please answer, we do by the grace of God. We do by the grace of God. 
Please see it. Oh, no hymn books in the pew there. Oh, do we have <laughs> the Apostles' Creed? So I'll say it on one's behalf, and you can nod along to indicate your assent. I do apologize. For Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was confined by the born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He ascended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of her, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, I'm going to transition to the uh, font. I'm inviting Danielle and Jennifer to come forward with Hunter and Aria. Well, the way we take every safety distance is not going to look like that. The Holy Spirit is upon me. 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 The Holy Spirit is Hunter and Ariel, let your light shine before us, that 
abstaining from good works and glory to God. Under an area of seed is the body of Christ's world. Oh. I admit it's a little odd not to be able to hug and hold and pray through the sanctuary, but it is what it is, and we are blessed we have been able to gather today to celebrate this wonderful moment together. Let's join in another hymn. This is God's Wondrous World. God's wondrous world and sing all nature rings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is God's wondrous world I rest me in the thought of rocks trees of sky and seas God's hand the wonder this is God's wondrous world. The birds their carols ring. The morning light, the lily white, declare their maker days. This is God's wondrous world. God shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass or the mountain pass, God's voice speaks anywhere. This is God's wondrous world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is God's wondrous world. Why should my heart be sad? The voice says, sing, and the heavens ring. God's reign, and let earth be glad. Everyone share in this worship, whether person or online, brings their own gift to the community. Many of these gifts are unseen, and may be unrecognized by the others. Especially so when we're at a distance, and for those of you who watch this after it has gone out live. Our calling as people of God is to feed those without access to others in the hope of the hunger of bodies, minds, and spirits. No matter where or when you're taking part in this service, we pray to God to help us give our gifts with a ready mind, a willing spirit, and a joyful heart. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures high and low. Give thanks to God in love essence of time today in consideration of some of the COVID uh, restrictions. Uh, the, the organ will have to wait until next, so tune in next week to hear the organ. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord of all being, source of every blessing, we thank for all good things, especially the opportunity to worship together in person once more and to celebrate the baptism of two children. 
We thank you for the life, for life and love in its many shapes and ways. For spouses, families, friends, and companions on the journey of faith. We thank you for work and home. Ability to work from home to safe. For the opening up of other workplaces, social spaces. In our desire to return to fuller social lives, remember to keep others safe and ourselves. Whether we are in the office, the classroom, the church, or wherever we need to go and be. We thank you for nature's beauty and comfort, for and skills and learning. All these and so much more have been so important in keeping spirits up and helping to soften the effects of being related from friends, family, and neighbors. hope, especially in light of the tremendous losses over the last eight months. We look to you, O God of compassion, according to their customs and desires. All those who are not part in compassion according to their gifts and calling. All those who sold through endless without a voice that did not come through some sort of device. Okay. Into another's eyes. We pray for all who will feel the effect of the pandemic for years. Be gentle with us, God, as we take first steps into real, knowing we make mistakes as we do. begin to emerge into a changed landscape, a different looking kind of world. Remind that you still provide us everything we need, including pleasure, nourishment, and strength. Give us the strength forward in hope. And please be gentle with us and help to be gentle with one another as we learn to adjust our expectations. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses as we those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the kingdom, but the power of glory forever and amen. amen just uh i've one minute and if others have them feel free to to rise there will be fellowship and all following our survey to see everybody are there other announcements can you can you hear me at the back there Good morning. On, on the 7th of August, notice appeared in the Hex Chronicle Herald, no virtual public hearing. Um, and this is regarding an action by Fathom Studios to, to enter multi-residential building and that Rosedale and touches the rear of our church. So it's very close nearby. It was a meeting about two years ago regarding the, um, when the developer and city officials came our church hall downstairs explained it. Uh, city council it was not passed back for amendments, 
and coming up again. So they invite a comment. Uh, 11 stories of uh, build, apartment building behind us. Maybe an opportunity to serve people in our church. Um, it, it may be may have concerns of their nature that they want to address. So that public uh, would be a, a, a consultation. They describe it. A virtual public hearing will be held on third, September 2nd at 6 p.m. Uh, if you want to make a presentation, you're supposed to get in ahead of time. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask me after the service. I'll be brief. It's certainly wonderful in the sanctuary. The plan is to this every Sunday at 1030. For those that are out there online watching, please like to see you. Uh, it's wonderful to have baptisms today. Baptism is a very special day for a wonderful family to have them here. And you, oh, yes, when you're heading downstairs, please uh, use the hand sanitizer. The stairs, there's tables and refreshments. For, please gather. Everybody's welcome. I don't think I've ever done this. Especially welcome, Reverend Wendy. Today, first time there, and also to thank her. For, this is her last. So we're very blessed to have her for the summer. So, the Reverend. Former military chaplain, as we say, many saved rounds. <laughs> it has been uh, an interesting, beautiful experience with you for the last two years. Virtually, been able to go to some of the break rooms and, and meet some folks and learn some about the people that make up this community. Obviously, it's wonderful to be able to come back and see some of you in person before I make my departure, but uh, you just never some Sunday. If I'm not occupied somewhere else, I might just come in and hang out in the back pew or something. It has been wonderful to, get to know you in the strained way that we have. I do thank you for welcoming me among you this summer. Closing him, we will go out with hope erection. We shall go action. We shall out for strength to strength go on. We shall go out to tell stories boldly, tales of a love that will not let us go. We'll sing our songs of wrong that can hide We'll dream a dream of hurts that can be healed. We'll love all the world, you vision of new life in Christ. We'll give of all to those who have not spoken, we find the word for those whose lips are sealed. We'll make the truth for those who sing no longer. The expressive love alive in every heart. We'll share our joy with those who still are weeping. Rames of strength for hearts that break in grief and desertion story. All in circles of our love. 
please rise as you are able. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.